Red, red, everywhere bloody red. Almost literally. <laughs> I suppose that is obvious given all this talk of romance, Valentine's Day, roses, so much red. It's almost as if I were living on Mars. Hmm, that gives me an idea. <laughs> ah, there you are. Yes, of course, this week's episode will be about Earth's red brother planet Mars. Rather, more specifically, humanity's most recent efforts in landing on the planet. Stick around, won't you? <laughs> Gentlemen, hello! This is Speaker's Corner, and I am the host, Tim Byron. The one and the only. We've talked a lot about love and romance and all that saccharine stuff of late, and the deity that embodies it, Aphrodite or Venus, depending on your European inclination. Let us switch from all that red that gets the blood pumping to another way in which to get the heart racing. War. Well, more specifically, Venus's marital and martial counterpart, the god of war, Mars. Uh, uh, well, we actually aren't going to cover Mars himself, but rather Mars itself, as in the planet. But even that will not be the subject of today's video, as we delve into the international efforts to scope out the Red Planet. We'll talk about the planet itself some other time, I suppose. Right, why are we talking about the red planet, Earth's second closest neighbour? Well, there have been some major accomplishments of late in regards to humanity exploring it. I'd like to die on Mars, just not on impact. <laughs> you know who said that? That's right, the world's most popular nerd at the moment, appearing in episodes of Rick and Morty, the richest man in the world and multi-company entrepreneur Elon Musk. He's famously in on the race to get to Mars via his SpaceX company and has a goal of establishing a colony on Mars, which would happen around 2040. And Mr. Musk claims everything would be electric because Mars has no oxygen in its atmosphere. Hmm. Things are progressing as the company effectively has replaced NASA in terms of sending Americans into space. Just recently, they were able to launch successfully its first manned flight into orbit, thus being the first private company to put someone in orbit and dock them at a manned spacecraft. This is relevant because a primary question of going to Mars is obviously, well... I mean, it's not rocket science. Well, it actually is rocket science, of course. It's, it's how the bloody Mars to get there. Mr. Musk plans on having a greenhouse on the red planet, but how to get there? The solution, reusable rockets, which SpaceX has recently and repeatedly tested with success. One of the company's most famous achievements, if not its most famous, was the successful launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket in 2018. The reason for its fame is due to the payload that it contained, one of Elon's own Tesla sports cars that should end up crossing something's orbit. Can you guess? It only happens to be in the video's title. That's right. Mars. Anyway, the car has a dummy astronaut named Starman sitting in the driver's seat wearing a SpaceX spacesuit, and there are a lot of neat Easter eggs on the car. It is constantly playing a loop of Bowie's Space Oddity and Life on Mars. <laughs> yes, who else could choose such a collection of songs? <laughs> There's also a, a miniature version of the car and its driver on the dashboard, a plaque with the names of those who worked on it, and a message on the vehicle's circuit board saying, Made on Earth by humans, <laughs> alongside other items. You know, it, it must be a billionaire thing, because someone else wanting to go to Mars is Amazon's erstwhile CEO, Jeff Bezos. Mr. Musk may have just 
recently replaced Mr. Bezos as the world's wealthiest man, but they have exactly the same yet competing goals. Mr. Bezos' blue origin is seeking to put millions of people in space for them to work. <laughs> well, live and work out there, but perhaps that is where the next Amazon factory will be. Those boxes aren't going to ship themselves. Or will they? The idea behind it is if people are living and working in space, then they should have numerous destinations, and one of them should be Mars. Once more, the question is, how to get there? Well, yes, of course, it'd be in a rocket, and that rocket's name is, well, it could be, the New Armstrong, so named after the first person to walk on the moon. It is not abundantly self-evident, as these are rumours at this stage. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Ah. What a moment. You know, there have been some tests, of course, but not to the degree of success that SpaceX has had. The reason to speculate as to why the new Armstrong might be the craft that Blue Origin uses to send people to Mars is the hint in the name. The exploratory component of the eponym indicates someone who set foot on the uncharted territory. Why this speculation? That has to do with the other two notable spacecraft in Blue Origin's development. The suborbital rocket, New Shepard, named after Alan Shepard, the first American in suborbital space, and the other, the New Glenn, named after John Glenn, the first Yank to orbit our blue planet. One cannot talk of eccentric billionaires without, of course, mentioning... Uh, Mars is a, a big place. Uh, when we uh, colonise Mars, he, uh, Musk, uh, can have the West End and we're going to have the, uh, the East End. There's room for us both. <laughs> can you guess who that is? Of course. Sir Richard Branson. You do know that despite his incredible brain capacity, he is still a child at heart. <laughs> Wait, who am I to talk? He's such a massive Star Trek fan that he appeared in the last movie, if only for one scene and one line. Uh, where were we? Ah, Virgin Galactic. It's trying to elbow into the private spaceflight company list. It, and many other business leaders, uh, view space tourism and LEO, uh, low Earth orbit flights, as the next enticing development in travel. Did you know that there are plans for space cruises? Well, it's actually a hotel in space, but the creators have compared it to a space cruise with a variety of activities on board. What a time to be alive. Justin Bieber booked his ticket, apparently. May he stay there forever. Hmm. <laughs> My apologies. Very mean, very mean. Uh, mm. Anyway, uh, Sir Richard is looking to join this exclusive billionaire club in exploring and colonising Mars someday, although his plans do not appear as concrete as either Mr Musk's or Bezos's. It appears to be more for leisure and entertainment than for humanity's exploratory panache. Of course, one doesn't have to be one of the wealthiest people on Earth to attempt to reach our smaller red brother planet. No, although it does require a lot of money, which is why some governments that were not previously in the space race have begun to engage in that level of exploration. There were two such notable examples quite recently, hence today's topic. Yes, the United Arab Emirates launch of its Hope Probe with assistance from the Japanese. This launch occurred on the 19th of July in 2020 and just recently, did it reach its orbital position to revolve around the planet on the 9th of February, a little over a week ago as of this video's date. This probe's purpose is to measure seasonal and daily weather on Mars, which may provide us with a new answer to the age-old chit-chat question, how's the weather? Hmm. Martian. Ha, uh, <laughs> right. So, uh, th this probe will measure weather on the planet, as that is one of the gaps in our knowledge of this place. It will do so in a variety of geographies and times to understand if there are any patterns we can learn. 
It will help to understand what happened to water on the planet, the interaction between the different layers in the atmosphere, and other such useful information. You know, it would be quite handy to know when boarding one of Mr. Musk's rockets to get there, or one of Sir Richard's cruise ships, whether it'll be a, a balmy negative 40 or a chilly negative 80 degrees C. <laughs> the probe's name is Hope, or Al-Aman in Arabic, uh, to give hope to the Middle East, and hopefully, pun intended, unite the region in a gratifying scientific cause. That month, in July, was truly astonishing, as there were not one, but three launches around this time heading for Mars. This is due to the small window in time, because Earth and Mars align favourably for planetary missions just once every 26 months. The second mission to launch around this time period was the Chinese Tianwen-1, which consists of an orbiter, lander, and rover. The Chinese have yet to reveal too many details about what the mission itself entails, but the orbiter has six instruments, including a mineral spectrometer that may help us, well, them, determine the composition of surface rocks. The rover also has six instruments, including a weather station, a magnetic field detector, and a ground-penetrating radar, which could spot subsurface water ice down to a depth of about a hundred meters. This rover would make China only the third country ever to land an object on Mars. The other two are, can you guess? That's right, the United States and Mother Russia, duh. <laughs> Should these work out well with Tianwen-1, which translates to heavenly questions, then that could lead to a return mission with Martian samples that could launch in 2030. Tianwen-1 is already in Martian orbit as of March 10th, 2021, and expects to land on the planet in May. The other mission to launch that magical Martian month of July 2020 was the joint effort by the US and the European Space Agency. It's a rover called Perseverance that landed just this past Thursday, February 18th. This fascinating project's aim is to find life itself. Well, one can hope, but at the very least it'll be looking for the remnants of Martian life. Perseverance is a one metric ton car-sized rover that will house instruments that should be able to detect ancient Martian life to understand the geology that could have led to microbes. It will land on a 45 kilometer wide crater that at one point was a lake and river delta billions of years ago. How exciting. Its findings will then end up in the virtual hands of scientists across both continents to suss out if there were ever life on this planet. Which seems highly likely, actually. Perseverance will indeed persevere as it generates oxygen through MOXIE, its in-situ experiment that will convert some of the planet's CO2 into all that too necessary element for life. Perseverance will also have its own helicopter drone on its belly. It will give birth in a manner of speaking, to the helicopter named Ingenuity upon landing, which will make the first ever aerial exploration not on Earth. This could portend many such projects on future missions, so no pressure, Ingenuity. Well, what an exciting time to be alive, I think so anyway. We've covered romance in the preceding videos, but how can one avoid the, the sweeping and swooning that comes from the marvels of science and engineering, such that we can land on a planet and colonize it, eh? Ha! What a brilliant mind we humans have, if, if only we put it to love the universe we inhabit, to nurture it with our hearts that feel inspiration from the tales of love I've mentioned earlier. I hope that this week's video has inspired a sense of wonder and love of scientific exploration, so please, please do us a favor by, by sharing, by liking, subscribing, telling your friends, and, um, well, tell them what you've learnt in this video. That's all from me, Tim Byron. This is Speaker's Corner. Much love, my dears. Take care and tune in next week. And, of course, here's looking at you, kid. Ta-ta! Take care. Hello again, my lovelies. Thank you so much for watching that video. It really means a lot. Um, 
Well, what can I say? Keep the smile going. Do remember to subscribe. Ring that bell. It helps out like you wouldn't believe. It just makes me so happy. You can see this big smile of mine. Um, keep calm, carry on, keep a stiff upper lip, and uh, if you like, there are some other channels in the description. I apologise for their content, but um, I think they're worth a watch, probably. If anything, just to educate yourself. <laughs> Best of the British to you, pip pip, cheerio, and don't forget to subscribe. Till next time, this was Speaker's Corner. Ta-ra.